Good evening, darlings and deviants. My name is Lucy. I'm just a little loony. And today uh, we're doing a bit of a couple different things. One, I'm streaming on YouTube. If you can, you know, if you should be on YouTube right now. So <laughs> hopefully you can see that. Uh, I'm doing this differently because like I want to kind of split off my Twitch stuff, do like video game stuff and my YouTube to be mostly magic stuff. So that's mostly where we're going for that. Uh, I hope everything's working. I have the, I theoretically, the chat box should work for both YouTube chat and Twitch chat. I don't know if it works because nobody's chatting right now, but it, hopefully it'll pick up later on. Uh, so um, hopefully people are going to filter in closer to two. I'm just going to kind of hang out for a bit right now, um, mostly because I'm not entirely sure uh, where everyone is. And also because I'm downloading Helldivers in the background, it's almost done and uh, it'll probably clean up the stream a little bit as it goes on. I hope everything is fine. I, I'm not really sure how different it is from YouTube and Twitch, so I'm hoping everything is fine. I can't really check the YouTube half from here. So I'll probably get started closer to around 2 uh, my time. Mostly just because I want to. We are yeeing the halls, Smite Lord. Uh, we're going to be opening up some uh, Thunder Junction. Uh, where I'm waiting for a bit to let people filter in and like come in because I'm... Ah! You showed up on the... Aha! You're there! That's good. Very good. Um, that basically means that theoretically we have... Oh! I can. Ah! Yo! Okay, good. The chat box works, so theoretically everything else should work as well. Here's hoping. Uh, in that case, I think I'm just going to get right on into it. So, whoop -a. Oh, wait, I gotta... Watch out! We have a box of magic cards! Uh, we're going to open these... We're going to open these up, and uh, as always, after... Because this year I'm doing that thing where... Uh, Based off of um, whatever I open in sets like these, uh, I have opened up a box of Ravnica Remastered Murders at Karlov Manor and a Collector's Booster of Fallout, the Commander set. Uh, we're going to be opening this one up, and then we're going to rebuild those Commander decks around that uh, because the benefit of this one is there's a ton of new legendaries that we can build around. Before, we didn't have that many to work around, but this one will probably give us a lot more to work with. That and also the special guest slot is pretty cool. And the breaking news slot and the big score, those are all going to be really cool opens. So let's get right on into it. It's two o'clock on the dot. Hopefully people are coming in. And to, the best way to open up these things is with a knife, in my opinion. Wah! Yeah, yeah. Open Sesame. Boost a box. We got a boost a box. I also did a bit with the lighting, so hopefully it looks a bit better and you can see the cards clearer. We got the draft archetype. If you like drafting, I like drafting, so I will save that for later. I'm going to get these packs out. Get Spinda here watching over us. Hello. Oh, oh. No. There we go. And toss the box. I'll deal with you later. All right. 36 packs of Thunder Junction. First pack. I'll probably just put like the commons and stuff off to the side. Ah, no, I'll, I'll organize them. So uh, if I'm right, what we need to do is put three, four, Five, six. I think that is what we're going to get here. Because I think that means we'll get the spice in the back. That's good. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty spicy. I do like the geese of the Hellraiser. She seems really cool. I don't think we can build around her, but I'm definitely going to put her in a zombies deck. 
Let's pull up the Elgato to zoom in a little bit. There we go. So we have a Ferrofication. A uh, red card, we'll put that here. Prosperity Tycoon. Outlaws Fury. Yeah, it's a bit of a too much zoom in. Yeah, this is fine. I want to get a balance of people can read it, but also like it's not overwhelming. Outlaws Fury. Geyser Drake. Spells it cost, cost one less to cast. That's not bad. Rooftop Assassin. Take the Fall. Trover Grizzly. Steer Clear. <laughs> I I love how this set just like plays with so many puns. I love this so much. The irrescribable Wolverine. I call it the Badger because it's just a Badger. All right, so vampire movie. I can't recall the name right now. Uh, there's a couple cool vampires in the set. Uh, okay, so the art card is of one of the legendaries. I can't remember their name off the top of my head. We got an island. So I know the full art islands are really cool. No, the full art lands in this set are really cool. I think the basics are also very nice. Like the regular ones. Like this fountain just looks very pretty to me. We have a foil silver deputy. Uh, he gets you some deserts and puts it on top. Now we should be getting to the rare, well, the fancy stuff. We have a siphon insight, blue and a black. You look at the top two cards of target opponent's library. Exile one of them. Phase down. And you may put the other on the bottom of the library. And then you can play the card that was put there at, that is exiled as long as it remains exiled. And it's got flashback for one blue-black. Very nice. Don't know if it'll see play. Another round. This is really cool. It's XX2 and a white. Exile any number of creatures you control. Then return them to the battlefield under their owner's control. Then repeat the process X times. Blink decks are going to love this because it basically says, Hey, blink your entire board any number of times. As long as you got the mana to pay. And an arid archway. So that one's probably just like a you know one of the boring ones, but we do have to go that far back because sometimes there's fancy stuff in there. Ah, no, come back, spend. She's watching over us. Blessing the pools. Blood Hustler. I don't remember what that one is. I'll need to look at it later. Or hopefully we open it. Caught in the crossfire. Deals 2 damage to each outlaw creature. Or 2 damage to each non-outlaw creature. Very good. It's a kind of a board wipe, but not... Ooh. Gem Lightfoot. Sky Explorer. This is the legendary that, like, if you haven't cast a spell from your hand, you draw a card. This might... I don't think this one's good enough for us to build around, but it's a really interesting one. It's If it was each in step, maybe, but then it would also be kind of broken in Commander. Slickshot Lockpicker gives something a flashback, and you can plot it for the same mana cost that it costs. Desperate Bloodseeker. Mill two cards. Stop cold. Gold Pan. It's a pan, and it's gold. This card's actually really good. Be not in, like commander or anything but in draft because giving plus one plus one for one mana it seems okay free shredder commando mystical tether mine raider we got an art card a foil soured springs i do like having more dual lands having access to more dual lands is pretty nice servant of the stinger this card is actually more playable than people think it is. It's one in a black for a 1-3 with death touch. If it deals combat damage to a player, if you've committed a crime this turn, which is just you've targeted anybody with anything, you can sacrifice it and then demonic tutor. You just put it into your hand. I think that is better than some people think. Ooh, primal might. X and a green target creature control gets plus X plus X until end of turn. Then it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Just a very good pump spell. I don't know if we're going to play it, but... It seems it's pretty good. Uh, we'll put it with the rares. Vladimir, New Blood. One in a black for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever you commit a crime, you put a plus one, plus one counter on them. The ability only triggers once each turn, but you could probably be doing it with, you know, anything, really. As long as he has four or more plus one, plus one counters on it, it has menace and lifelink. That's just a solid creature. 
put him with the legendaries, even though I don't think we're going to be um, playing him. An intrepid stable master. Nothing super spicy yet. However, there is plenty of it in here, honestly. My last night, my ah oh, no, don't knock over Spinda. Uh, last night, my pre-release pool, I opened like three mythics. It was kind of nuts. I didn't win. I didn't do well because uh, people just ran me over. But it was a very, very, very neat pool. Betrayal of the Vault, uh, deal damage to things. Spinewood's Armadillo, just a big, big Armadillo boy. Honest Rut Scene. This card, everybody was playing it because creature spells costing one less to cast is good on its own, but he also regrows something. It's just, this card's really good for three mana. Honestly, we might even play it in the for our decks. Uh, I don't know. We'll need to look at it. It's going to be hard to beat out the Wise Mothman. We have Mourner Surprise. You bring something back from the grave. A failed fording. A return target on land permanent to the turner's hand. If you control a desert, surveil one. Very good removal spell. Train Arnix. Spinewoods Paladin. Outlaw Medic. Reckless Lackey. Lackey. This card's just pretty good. You know, drawing a card, making a treasure token. We got a copy token. It should be... Oh, no plot on the other side. Lonely Arero. It is a... a Aroyo? Aroyo? Hmm. It's a white and a blue. Uh, it's the dual land for deserts. We have a lone shark. Like I said, the set is very, it's just funny. I like it. I know some people are complaining that it's like too not funny, but eh, I like funny as it turns out. It's three and a blue for a three, four. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you cast two or more spells this turn, you draw a card. That's fine. We're probably not going to play it in the commander decks, but eh, it's probably good. Ooh, that's a, ooh, that's a good one. Not for this, but it's just a good one. Surgical Extraction, you pay one for Rexian mana, which can be paid with a black or a, you know, or two life. Uh, it's an instant, and you choose a card in a graveyard. Other than a basic land card, you search its owner's graveyard, hand, and library for any number of cards with the same name as that card and exile them. It's very good in formats like Modern, where, you know, there's some really big cards that you want to get rid of. Uh, it's not that good, Commander, because most of the time people are only playing one of's. Ooh, and a full art special guest brazen borrower. One blue blue for an instant. Uh, one blue blue for a flash flying fairy rogue. Uh, it can only block creatures with flying, but it's a 3 1, so you don't really matter too much. But you can also return target on land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand for a one and a blue at instant speed with petty theft. I like it. Great train heist. So spree is interesting. You pay one red. And then you can pay some other costs if depending on what you want to do. So with this one, it's an instant. So if you pay one red, and then you can either pay two and a red as well to untap all creatures you control. If it's your combat phase, there's an additional combat phase this turn. Very good. Two extra mana. Creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain first strike until end of turn. You can do both of those, so that's very good. But it's also going to be six mana, so that's a lot. You can also pay one red more. Choose target opponent. Whenever a creature control deals combat damage to that player this turn, create a trapped to treasure token. <laughs> Great train heist is based on my life. Big mood. Understandable. Wait, did you actually get into a great train heist? Three, four, five, six. I feel like a Pokemon YouTuber now because like Pokemon has the same thing where they have to like maneuver the cards because like they have like except they have a set number of rares. <laughs> I don't know. So I have to overcompensate Thunder Lasso. It's a pretty good equipment for a draft Scorching Shot. This actually might see play because it's two red deal five damage to target creature. That's pretty good. Uh. I don't think so, because how Spree is worded, it says choose one or more additional costs. I think if you could just pay the one, it would say specifically choose up to, it would say choose up to three additional costs for that. <laughs> Legally, I'm not allowed to say anything. That's fair. Corrupted Conviction, we saw this back in Mar uh, March of the Machine, I think. Fall Plunderer, it's okay. Very strict. 
proud of my pylons. The thing is, so before we were looking a lot closer at commons and uncommons because we were like trying to see what's spicy. Um, but unfortunately, now that we've gotten like Fallout and a lot of good rares and mythics and like big stuff, we're now looking for like really big cards. And since this is a standard set, it's meh. But it's still nice to see what we get and we, what we open. It does kill Sheldred. This does, in fact, kill Sheldred. Armored Armadillo, Quilled Charger. Got a Vampire Rogue. Got Jagged Barons, the Black Red Desert. Got a Stubborn Burrow Fiend. It's one of those mounts, so it saddles for two. Two, two, whenever it becomes saddled for the first time each turn, you mill two cards. Then it gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. That actually seems crazy. Because you can just buff it a lot. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2 when it, at the start. Uh, but it can very easily get very big. And we have classic murder! One black black destroy target creature. Uh, it's nice to have this fancy art, but we've had this for a while. We, because, you know, murders at Karlov Manor had plenty of them. Ooh, we got a concealed courtyard. It enters the battlefield tap unless you control two or fewer lands, but it's got white and a black. It'll probably see play if we have a white black deck. And we have... Finding interrogation. It's a it's a thought seize, but worse. It does get rid of plot cards, but I think that's more of a limited thing. I don't think we're gonna be seeing a lot of plot in Commander, really. Alright, got three, six. Got demonic ruckus. Slick sequence deals two damage to any target, and if you cast another spell this turn, draw a card. I like it. Hollow Marauder. Six and a black. Okay, plus one is for each creature card in your graveyard. Okay, that's understandable. And here's about a foot, any number of target opponents. Each discard a card. And if they didn't discard a card with mana value four or greater, you draw a card. Ooh. So I don't think Mount is vehicle, but worse. Like, uh, Mount isn't crew, but worse. Um, because the Mount can work on its own. You can still attack with the 2-2. Two -two. Like, it's a two-mana 2-2 two -two that you can just attack with. If you did the same thing with a vehicle, you kind of can't really do anything with it until you get another buddy to go along with it. At least with uh, Mount, you can still use the creature and like attack with it and block with it without having something else to go along with it. It's just different. We have Spring Splasher, Bristleback Sentry, Throw from the Saddle. Uh, this deals damage. It'll probably end up seeing play because we need more removal, but it's okay. It's not like amazing or anything. Shade goes security, highway robbery. Again, more just funny, funny names. We got a vampire rogue, the black white desert. Reach for the sky. Three and a green enchant target creature. Flash, it gets plus three, plus two in reach. And it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield. You draw a card. And it's not bad. No, spinda. Then we have ride down. It's just a removal spell. It's fine. Ooh, we have Fibblethip, Lost on the Range. One blue blue for a 1-1 one, one with Ward 2. You can look at the top card of your library at any time. The top card of your library has Plot. The Plot cost is equal to its mana cost. You may plot non-land cards from your top of your library. So basically what Plot is, is you can pay... It's like a down payment. You pay for it now. You can't cast it this turn. But later, you can cast it for free. Mounts are too easy to remove compared to vehicles, and they don't, I assume, and they don't do enough different to be worth running over vehicles for me. The, di the main difference to me is, like, they are just like any other creature. Now, it really depends on the mount in question, because some of them aren't that good for the value, in my opinion. But there is, if we opened it, I want to see it. Now... In Commander, I definitely think they're not good enough because there's not really any big, heavy-hitting mounts. But, I mean, it's fine in Draft and Limited. Got one port Vigilante, has double strike as long as you've committed a crime this turn. It's really interesting how the Vigilantes are also outlaws because they are. They're trying to bring justice. Something about, you know, laws being legal if you have money, blah, blah, blah. Capitalism bad, etc. Three, six. Boop. B. 
Beast Bond Outcaster draws you a card. Cunning Coyote! It's Wily Coyote. Except, you know, not. When there's a battlefield, tar another target creature you control gets plus one plus one and gains haste until end of turn. And it has plot. And there's also a, uh... This is <laughs> he lost the plot. It's so great. Silver Deputy. Silver Deputy. Raven of Fell Omens. Daring Thunder Thief. Flying into the battlefield tapped. Sterling Hound. Here's Battlefield Surveil 2. Peyton Naturalist. Mill 3, you put a land in your hand. If you don't, you get a treasure token. Sterling Supplier. Get counters. Rodeo Pyromancers is really interesting. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, add red, red. This didn't do much for me. 2-2 uh, two, two haste for 2 mana is pretty good. Yeah. The thing is, like, he's not even just that. He's a 2-2 two, two with haste. That also gives something else to do with haste because you can also plot him. So if you, you know, put him in the bank, you can then on your next turn play a three mana card and then give that haste when you put him into play. Plot's really cool. I really like it as a mechanic. Okay, we got an art card. For the slick shot, I think. We got scoured sp soured springs, blue black desert. Foil Raven of Felomans. Essence Capture, blue, blue, counter target creature spell, put a plus one, plus one counter on a creature you control. It's okay. It's fine. Pillage the Bog. Uh, it's black, green, with plot for one black, green. Look at the top X cards of your library, or X is twice the number of lands you control. Put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. See, the, this is why I like plot. See, if you go to turn three and you draw this, and you're like, well, I have three lands, I, I want to, you know, look at more cards. You can then plot it, and when you have, like, five lands, then you're looking at the top ten cards. That's way, way better than just six. Boombox. Destroy up to one target artifact, up to one target creature, and up to one target land. I, I don't know if this card is playable in Commander. I think if you have an artifact deck, it's very, like, okay. But being able to destroy an artifact, a creature, and a land is very solid to me. Open this is army. Put six in the back. Oh, the Grand Abolisher. The new Grand Abolisher looks sweet. We have Rest of Rampage. Untap all creatures, target player controls, and target creature gains double strike the pill on turn. This is a blowout. In limited. Nothing much else. Badlands Revival. Put one creature, you get a target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and one target permanent from your graveyard to your hand. Very good in green black decks. Hello Alchemist, give us a trample. Ankle Biter, 1-1 one, one with Death Touch. Consuming Ashes, it exiles a creature if it had mana value 3 or less, Surveil 2. I don't think we're playing it, but eh, removal's always okay. Slick Shot Fault Buster, take up the shield. Giant Beaver. Bridal Bighorn. We got the art card for, I don't know who this is, Outcaster Trailblazer. Planes, the very fancy art. I love how it has the, like, mana symbol in, like, the sky. It's a lot more subtle than the other ones, but in the planes, it's very explicitly, like, here is the sun. Uh, foil Patient Naturalist. Humiliate. White and a black. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land card from it. You choose a... Uh, that player discards that card, put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control. It's fine. Ooh, we got a big scorecard. Simulacrum Synthesizer. Two and a blue. When it enters the battlefield, you scry two. Whenever another artifact with mana value three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, create a zero zero colorless construct artifact creature token with this creature gets plus one plus one for each artifact you control. Very good. I don't know if we have an artifact deck. Like, I don't know if we can actually do that, but it would be, be very neat if we could. Ooh, and get off the flesh right. So this guy is th two and a blue. This is a little harder to read. I understand. It's two, three. Whenever you cast a spell during your, your turn, other than the first spell you cast, create a two, two blue and black zombie rogue creature token. Whenever a zombie enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus plus one counter on it for each other zombie that entered the battlefield under your control this turn. So you just cast a bunch of spells and you make a bunch of zombies. 
that would be where you want to play plot. I don't know if we're going to, although we do now have two mono blue cards. We could theoretically build a mono blue deck. That sounds hilarious. Kind of might be terrible, but also hilarious. Three, six, pop up, stubborn burrow fiend, wrangler of the damned, marauding sphinx, boneyard desecrator, gin of fool's fall, wanted griffin, discerning peddler, dance of the tumbleweeds. I think this is probably going to be the C play because we don't really have that much like cheap ramp. Uh, one in a green for spree so you're just paying that up front then you can either pay one to search your library for a basic land card or a desert card and put that onto the battlefield or you can also pay an additional three to make an xx green elemental creature token where x is the number of lands you control which can be you know seven eight it's gonna be pretty big iron fist pulverizer a varmint token got one of those foil islands again very pretty got a Dre Deep Muck Desperado. Whenever you commit a crime, each opponent mills three cards. This ability only triggers once each turn. It's it's a mill card. Ooh, Contagion Engine. For six mana, enters the battlefield, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature target player controls. And then for, for and tap, you can proliferate twice. Ooh, Mothman would love this card. Although we don't know if we're playing Mothman yet, so who knows? Dot Dust Animus. If you, it's a one in the. Ooh, I need to get this heart out of the way. There's a heart like right where like I can't. It won't let me read it. And I like make it bigger. And I do it like this. Oh, the Tumbleweed cards can, goes in the Bonnie Paul deck. I don't remember what Bonnie Paul does. Dust Animus is one on a white for a 2 3 with flying. Uh, it also has plot for the same cost, which you probably are doing because if you control five or more untapped lands, it enters the battlefield with two plus plus one counters and a lifelink counter on it. Lots of making all the cards that trigger from crimes only once return is garbage. Uh, I think it's a precaution because there are a lot of cards back in the day that are really easy to do multiple times. So if you don't put that once per turn on it, it's just going to go crazy. And I think, like, it's fine if, like, I, I think it's cool because it's once per turn, but it's not during, it's once per, it's not during once, it does not trigger once during each of your turns. So if you have, like, a cheap way to activate it, you can hit it to everybody. Like, you can, like, on your turn, you're paying, like, your you ping your opponent to your left, and then your other guy, and then another opponent. And by the time it goes back around to you, you've committed three crimes and gotten whatever benefits that come from that. I do think all of them being once per turn is not that cool. I wish they would have made one where, like, you pay, you do a crime, you pay, like, two mana or something to do a thing. So if you wanted to get, like, crazy, you would also have to make a bunch of mana. But eh, I, I, can, I can understand playing it safe. We have form of posse. X red and white create X one one red mercenary creature tokens. We might actually do this because we have Caesar. Caesar's pretty good with this. Blood Hustler. Whenever you commit a crime, you put a plus plus one counter on it. This ability only triggers once each turn. Oh right, it's a uh, it Bonnie Paul is the uh, Paul Bunyan. Oh Bonnie Paul Paul Bunyan. I get it. Overzealous Muscle, Mirage Mesa, Jailbreak Scheme, Deserts Do, Snakeskin Veil, very good protection spell, but not that good in this day and age. Sword Damage Strike Creature, Destroy Target Artifact, Explosive Derailment. Oh, wait, did I miss it? Oh, Blood Hustler, yeah. She's very good. Because if you can, like, I think she's going to be insane in draft specifically because if you can ping your if you have a way to commit a crime during your opponent's turn every single time like you play her on three you then 
You play her with two mana on turn three. You play a desert, ping them. She's a 2-2. Goes back around to you. You play another desert, ping them. That's a 3-3. Then if you can just target their stuff at all, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It, it demands an answer, and I love cards like that. Voracious Varmint. Destroy target artifact or enchantment for a 2-2 with Vigilance. This is okay. I like it. We have an art card. Festering Gulch. It's the Black Green Desert. Outlaw Medic. Ooh. Cruel Ultimatum. Blue, blue. Black, black, black. Red, red for a sorcery. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. Then discards three cards. Then loses five life. You put a creature card from your graveyard into your hand, draw three cards, and gain five life. Love these effects. It's a little bit power crap nowadays, but like, it's I, I love Cruel Ultimatum. It's fun. Wily Duke, Arlen Hero. Whenever it becomes tapped, you gain two life and draw a card. This is the mount, like, command. Like, this is what you're supposed to, like, build around for the mount stuff, but... I'm not a huge fan. I think I think he's fine on his own. A 4-2 with Vigilance for 3 is okay. Um, you just need to find a way to tap him somehow. And a Mage Bane Lizard. This card is probably unironically playable in Commander because it's like, hey, you have that friend who loves to loop that one instant of sorcery in their graveyard over and over and over and over and over again? Yeah, they're not going to do that anymore because after that, they got to take damage. Oh yeah, we opened him earlier. Vlad, oh, v Vladimir, new blood. Yeah, we got him earlier. Yeah, I don't think he's a good commander. Uh, well, I could actually see him being a good commander because the plus one plus one counters infinitely stack. If you have a way to commit crimes pretty consistently, it's probably fine. But like, you would need to find a way to keep doing that over and over and over again. And I don't know any way in black to do that off the top of my head. I get a little closer to my table here. It's getting... My back's hurt. We have Dark Arlock, Grizzled Genius. This is just funny. Grizzled Genius. I love it. Suppose you cast from your graveyard or from exile costs two less to cast. And plotting cards from your hand costs two less. Not bad. But you would need to, you know, be playing plot a lot. So yeah, I don't think we're going to be doing that. Neutralize the guards... I put this in the wrong pile. Quick draw. The weird thing about quick draw to me is like if you play your quick draw second, your creature wins that combat more. And I don't know how to feel about that. Because like ideally this would have split second, but like that would be kind of busted. But like I don't know. Because, like, if you play it second, they lose the first strike. The person who played it first. Well, actually. Cause, well, because they just, like, wait for the stack to resolve, and then they cast... I, I don't like it. Lone Shark. Skull Duggery. It's a good card, but it's not that bad. It's all about Trick Shot. Deals six damage target creature and up to two to another creature token. Cac Tarantula. It's a cactus. But it's a spider. Some people's nightmares. We have a art card. We have a green white desert. A foil gold pan. This is probably in flavor. Pest infestation. Ooh, this card is very good. Destroy up to X target artifacts and or enchantments. Create X, twice X. One one black and green pest creature tokens with it. When this creature dies, you gain one life. I kind of wish they printed pest creature tokens, but eh, you can't, like, it's an old card, where are you gonna, like, how is, what does a Thunder Junction pest look like? And a Botanical Sanctum. Lance. Full steam ahead! Until end of turn, each creature control gets plus two, plus two, gains trample, and it can't be blocked by more than one creature. This card, as an overrun, might be enough to see play in, like, actual big formats. Overrun has been kind of bad, in recent memory just because like there's more effects that do better things than just your average everyday overrun but that might be good enough three 
Actually, I think we can just remove the Art Carter token and then do five. Although I do like having that separation. Maybe that was probably a better thing to do. We have Bandits Hall. Whenever you commit a crime, put a loot counter on it. This card is very good. I don't like three mana manaliths, but being able to draw a card later on just for committing crimes, which most people do anyway. Very good. Get to draw a card. Gonna take you for a ride. Two in red. Has flash as long as you committed a crime this turn. You gain control. It's a threat and effect. You take control of a creature and it gains haste and you give it back at the end of turn. Most of the time it's not going to be back. Oh, Helldivers has downloaded. So hopefully if the stream was looking any sketchy, it is better now. Goes back Bothcarry, Vengeful Townsfolk. Peerless Rope Master. Nizumi Link Breaker. Sterling Keykeeper. Thunder Salvo. Reach for the sky. Foil Mountain. Th Foil Thorn Nato. Two and a green destroy target creature with flying, or it has cycling for one and a green. That's fine. <laughs> the duplication glitch. It strikes again. No. Ooh, we got a mythic though. Railway Brawler. Three green green for a five five. Whenever another creature is about to fit under your control, put X plus plus one counters on it where X is its power, and it plots for three and a green. So, I did see, I forgot who it was, but I saw someone, they were like, why would you ever want to plot this? Why does it have plot? Now, I do agree, flavorfully, I don't know why this has plot. Like, why does a brawler have, like, it's a warrior, it's not really plotting anything, it's, it's very specific in what it does. Now, why you would do this, hi Squee! Now, why you would do this um, in general is you would plot it and then play it for free and then play more creatures, you know, in case this would get removed. It doesn't have any protection, so the plot acts as a pseudo protection. Any good hits? Surfing and the Stinger? Uh, nothing super spicy yet. Uh, we got a Contagion Engine, which looks really sweet, but it's not like money or anything. We have this Simulacrum Synthesizer which I really like, but I don't know if we're going to be able to play in the other decks. Uh, and a special guest, but it was a Brazen Borrower. It's not bad, but when uh, the other options are like, you know, Stoneforge Mystic, eh. Although, in Markov Manor, we did... Karloff Manor. We did get two special guest cards. So, we may still get another one. Who knows? We got a map token. I actually needed one of those. I'm building building the green white Kellen, and he needs a lot of map tokens. We have a rambling possum, fleeting reflection, Ertha Joe, frontier mentor. This is a really interesting commander that, like, I feel like it could be really good. I just don't know how to what, what to put in it. It's two a red and a white for a two four. Uh, when she enters the battlefield, you make a 1-1 one, one red mercenary creature token that lets you tap to give something plus 1 plus 0. Whenever you activate an ability that targets a creature or a player, you copy that ability. Then you may choose new targets for that copy. It seems pretty okay, in my opinion. But, like, in, in, big, in big boy commander, like, you would be able to companion it. Uh, the reason for special guest cards, Smite Lord, is so they don't end up in standard. Like, if you print them in the special guest slot, you can make them not standard, so you can print whatever you need to. But, like, personally, I think Stoneforge Mystic would be a little bit busted in command, not in command here, uh, in standard right now. Uh, not because, well, we already have a lot of cool swords, so putting them into play by themselves would be kind of insane. But also, Stormforge Mystic is just one of those cards you can't really, like, print in standard unless you know that all of the equipment so far is mid. Because, like, keep in mind, we also have all of those reconfigure stuff, and it's all of the possible combinations is just, like, it would make standard a nightmare. And while most people don't really care about standard, you do need to care about the people on Arena who do really like playing that mode. Also, like, if you open up, like, your standard rare being desert, I don't think people would be too hype about it. But if it's a bonus card, it's fine. 
I, I, I think that's my personal opinion behind it. Guys are Drake. It does look fun with fingers. Unfortunately, like the best finger commander is uh the the Keller Morph. And that is uh not in those colors. But you know, being able to do both. Prickly pair. Make a bunch of one one mercenaries. Free Strider Commando. Green. We got an abraded bluffs. Red, white, desert land. Jolene, Jolene. Jolene, Jolene! One red and a green for a 4 2. Uh, she's a plundering pugilist. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures with power 4 or greater, you create a treasure token. And then you sacrifice a treasure to deal one to any target. I still like the original Jolene a little bit more, but this one is fun. Also, Snorse. It's a snake horse. Snorse. Got buried in the garden. We. I don't know why this is here. Like, of all the cards that I think was, like, why we just had this card, like, a set ago. Why did you put it here in the special slot? But if you want, like, a green-white uh, removal spell to be here, it's probably the best one we've seen in a long time. I don't get it, though. Gisa! We got... Not only did we get... Both of the, both of the Innistrad zombie people, but they're also both um, in the cool wanted frame. She's three black black for a four four ward. Uh, pay two and pay two life. Skeletons and zombies you control get plus one plus one and have menace. And if you commit a crime, create two tapped two two blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens. Only triggers once each turn. And Vraska joins up. Black and a green. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a death touch counter on each creature. Each! Ooh. That's not bad. Whenever a legendary creature you control does combat damage to a player, draw a card. This is going to go into my Skullbriar deck uh, as soon as I am able to play these cards. So, I am putting a restriction on myself. You know, some people will be like, yeah, you don't have to do that. You can take out cards. It's not like anybody's keeping track. I am keeping track. I hold myself to honor. Um, but I don't have, like, I put these in, like, a separate box, and I don't build other commander decks from it. I only do stuff from, like, here. But, you know, I, I'm i definitely taking that out at the end of the year. One, two, three. Ooh, maybe at the end of the year, after we open, like, whatever the big set is, I'll go through, like, the greatest hits, or I'll have the binder and I'll open it up and be like, hey, here's all the cool stuff we got. That seems like a neat idea. I'll schedule that, put that on the list. Nurturing Pixie. Scale Storm Summoner. Seal of her day, Deputy. Nizumi Link Breaker. Failed Fording. Mourner Surprise. Prickly Pear. Drover Grizzly. Mystical Tether. Eroded Canyon, the Blue Red Desert. Foil Cac Tarantula. Another Thornado. That's a lot of them. Kellen joins up. Van Hi, Wisteria. Hi. Uh, it's Kellen joins up is a legendary enchantment for Bant. Green, white, blue, or brokers if you're uh, if you're a zoomer. Uh, when Aaron's Battlefield, you may exile a non-land card with mana value 3 or less from it. If you do, it becomes plotted, meaning you can cast it for free next turn. Whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Each. So we don't have any Bant commanders right now, but if we do, it'd be pretty sweet. And a shifting grift. Don't miss say that, or you will be uh, very sad. Grifting shit. Someone censor that, please. Nobody can do that. That's me. Oops. Jolene again. We already got her, so I'll put her off to the side. I have her foil in there. Canyon Crab. Outlaw's Fury. Phantom Interference. Okay, thanks for popping in. Uh, I did want to ask, actually. Do people like how this is on YouTube more than it is on Twitch? I don't know how the like chat is different or anything. Like, 
I don't have emotes or anything, so it's not like I have any special things anybody can do, but like, I don't know. Any cards I'm hoping for. Um, I'm really looking for any of the three color legendaries because that would help us build like an actual cool, like different commander deck than the ones that we have for the Fallout stuff. And I think I might impose this rule on myself that I should build legendaries that we open up from here. Mostly because like, obviously the Fallout ones are going to be like cranked up to a million. A uh, Phantom Interference. I think this card is going to see, like, I might try this out in uh, Azoria Spirits and Pioneer. So, because uh, it has a counter spell attached to it, but if you if you draw it late in the game, you can counter a spell and make a 2-2. Two -two. I think that's pretty good. Got another Gold Pan, Desperate Bloodseeker, Mine Raider, Patient Naturalist, Outlaw Maidic. Ooh, Full Art Fancy Island. A Foil Iron Fist Pulverizer. Back for more. I opened two of these last night. Uh, I only got to play it, like, twice. Uh, but when you play this card, it's backbreaking. Uh, it's four black and a green for an instant. You return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. When you do, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. And it's at instant speed. Love that. Ooh, we got an Archangel of Tides. One white, white, white for a 3-5 with flying. As long as it has... As long as it's untapped, creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers you control unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. As long as it's attacking, creatures can't block unless their controller pays one for each of those creatures. Good on the aggressive and good on the defensive. And if you have a way to untap her or just, you know, give her vigilance, this card's insane. Now, Forsaken Miner. This card is actually, I can talk about this one a bit. It's one black for, it's probably the best, like, things that we can bring back uh, that we've seen in a long time. It's one black for a 2-2 two, two with, uh, can't block, but whenever you commit a crime, you can pay one black and bring it back tapped. Uh, actually, returned, it should be great. It doesn't come into play tapped. It's insane. Hi, Hoffron, how you doing? You got about halfway through. Or, well, we're halfway through the box. So you are in here just in time if you want to hang out. Let's see. Tiny Bones art card. Woo! We got five. Oop. Got a resilient roadrunner. Like I said, Wily Coyote is over there. Sheriff. Cactus Folk sure shot. Stab cold. Conduit Pylons, Land Desert. I think this one's really good because you can fetch it with the land, the thing that gets deserts from your deck. And it comes into play untapped. Love that. Sunshiny kind of day. Love to hear that. Vault Plunderer. Reckless Lackey. Giant Beaver! Stagecoach Sentry. Lonely Array Arrow. Plan the heist. Two blue blue. Serve L3 if you have no cards in hand. Then draw three cards. And plot for three and a blue. I like this. I like this a lot. We might play it. Skewer the critics. Two and a red. For a sorcery deal three damage to any target. But if you've dealt damage to somebody, it only costs one red. Yeah, it's not that Oh! T torpor orb. Two, j two mana. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. This is a uh, very, very good. <laughs> uh, I don't know if we'll play it because this is kind of a Staxi card and uh, we <laughs> we have a Ravages of War that we can play. <laughs> we can just make people miserable. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe. We'll, we'll take a look at it. Three steps ahead. One blue. Uh, it has spree, so you can either pay one to blue as well to counter target spell, three and a blue to create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature control, or two and a blue, draw two cards and discard a card. I really like this. I might play it in spirits because being able to counter a spell or make uh, another threat of yours is pretty good. Ah, oh, we got a signed uh, Tiny Bones this time. We got a tomb trawler. Uh, two. I, I don't like 
like effects like this. But if we had a thing that let us punch with our butt, definitely. Shepherd of the Clouds. Miram, Herd Whisperer. This is the Mount Uncommon Legendary. I don't know if we're going to play it. It's a green and a white, as long as it's your turn. Uh, mounts and vehicles you control have hexproof. Whenever I mount a vehicle you control attacks, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. it it's fine. I'm not a huge fan, but a two mana three two that gives uh, mounts and vehicles good. It'll probably see. It'll probably be pretty good in draft. Jin of Fool's Fall, trained Erinx, Black Snag Buzzard, Highway Robbery, Hard Bristle Bandit, Armored Armadillo. We got a basic swamp. I, I, I love the art on these. Like, I know the full the full art lands are really cool and have, like, the the symbols and it. It's just really cool. I like, I will maintain that the artists who work on the regular basics have just as good art as the full art ones. Doesn't mean I'll play them over it, but I will praise their work because it's really good. I would definitely have it as a desktop background if I, you know, could find the art legally. Ooh, Selvala Eager, Eager Trailblazer. This was actually one I was looking for. Uh, you know, it would be really interesting to build a deck with her. Two green and a white with Vigilance. Whenever you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 red mercenary creature token with tap. Target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn. You choose a color. Uh, add one mana of any Add one mana of that color for each different power among creatures you control. I love this. She's also just big. A four mana, four, uh, four or five with vigilance is just big. Ooh, no, come back. We have Pariah, two and a white enchanted creature. All damage that would be dealt to you is dealt to enchanted creature instead. It's okay. It's fine. Hell to pay. X on a red deals X damage to target creature. Create a number of tap treasure tokens equal to the amount. We've seen this one from before. It was like one of the first cards printed, but like this card is very good because it lets you convert like mana that you weren't spending into treasure. It lets you bank bank mana for later. And hey, speaking of gold, gold rush. One in a green, create a treasure token. Gets plus two plus two for each treasure you control. My that would be very good for Jolene. Jolene would want a card like that. I think all green decks would want a card like that. Not in Commander really, but Probably fine. Have a token? Nope, that's an ad card. Wizards stop printing ad cards. Like, I understand, like, you need to, like, sell stuff, but, like, people, like, we are on the internet all of the time. You don't need to give us ads. We understand what we want. If people want to play Arena, they are going to play Arena, and they will find out about it. It's very unlikely that someone is opening up a pack of magic cards and doesn't know about Magic Arena. Like, I'm sure that there is a percentage, but like, it's unlikely. We have a Longhorn Sharpshooter. Make your own luck. Corrupted Conviction. Here your Strix. Bristleback Sentry. Consuming Ashes. Discerning Peddler. Dance of the Tumbleweeds. Sterling Supplier. A foil eroded canyon, blue red desert land. <laughs> a foil fibble dip lost on the range. A decisive denial, green blue target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Tar uh, or counter target non land creature spell. Uh, counter target non creature spell unless its controller pays three. Very good card. Oh, mm. we got Oko. Noko, the ringleader. He's two, a green, and a blue. At the beginning of combat on your turn, Oko, the ringleader, becomes a copy of up to one target creature you can... Tr Nobody cares. I hate him. Goodbye, Oko. Giving ringleaders a bad name. Also, nobody calls some... Like, nobody calls someone who runs the operation a ringleader. They call him, like, the boss. Or, like, something like that. Like, nobody call Like... Nobody calls someone the ringleader. So very obviously, he called himself that, and I hate that. 
Let's see you wrangle a brush wag. Let's see you wrangle a brush wag and for a petting zoo. Mother Hubbard. Anyway. Human cleric token. Because okay. So uh Outlaw's Merriment is a card. Oh, also I guess this means there is a pest token. When did you look for it? This means Out Outlaw's Merriment is a card in the set. Only one of those types is an outlaw in the set. I feel like that might have been wrong. I don't know. Maybe don't include these. Or maybe clerics are just more nefarious on Eldraine than they are on Thunder Junction. Who knows? This town ain't big enough for the toe of us. Congregation Griff. Outlaw's Fury. Daring Thunder Thief. Sterling Hound. Raven of Ill Omens. Rodeo Pyromancers. Spinewoods Paladin. Bridal Bighorn. Forlorn Flats. White Flag Desert Land. Foil Boneyard Desecrator. It's three and a black. Uh, for a 3-4 with Menace, 1 in black, sacrifice another creature, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Uh, if an outlaw was sacrificed this way, you make a treasure token. Ooh, that's pretty good. Endless Detour. Ooh, I know we saw this in a uh, new Capenna, but I like it a lot. I really hope we pull a Bant Legendary, because I would like to play all these cool Bant cards that we're opening up. Green, white, and blue. The owner target spell, non-land permanent, or a card in a graveyard puts it on top of, on the top or bottom of their library. Very, very good. Lila Undefeated Slick Shot. One blue and a red for a 3-3 with prowess. Whenever you cast a multicolored instant or sorcery spell from your hand, exile that spell instead of putting it into your graveyard as it resolves. If you do, it becomes plotted. I love this card so much. Like, it's going to be hard to decide between her and the uh, Incella Lee Quick Shot. Uh, Stellarly wild card, rather, because they both do really cool things, and I love multicolored instants and sorceries. Uh, it, it's going to be a hard choice. I don't think we play her in our, like, box commander, though. I don't think we have enough to make it work. Map the Frontier. We'll probably play that, though. That's a good ramps card. Open a Sazami. Token. Token. Five back. Luxurious locomotive. Last lassoed by the law. Rictus robber. Spring slasher. Wanted griffin. Boneyard desecrator. Iron fist pulverizer. Throw from the saddle. Quill the charger. Regular swamp. Lazav familiar stranger. One blue back, one blue black for a one four. Whenever you commit a crime, put a plus one plus one counter on him. Then you may exile a card from a graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, you may have Lazav become a copy of that card until end of turn. Oh wait, until end of turn? Eh, I'm not a fan of that. I'm really excited for the new upkeep commander. Armageddon Clock is one of my favorite cards, and that one finally makes it playable. Yeah, uh, Obeka is really sweet. It's just like. I can tell that there is going to be a fine line between insanely broken and someone doing it for fun. There's going to be a very, very narrow line for her. Fierce Retribution. Okay. This is still in standard. Why is it here? Whatever. It's one in a white for an instant destroy target attacking creature. Or if you pay five in a white, you can cleave, which means you remove the stuff in the bracketed text. So it's just destroy target creature. It's fine. We probably won't play it. Rakdos joins up. Three black and a red. When Rakdos joins up, enters the battlefield. First turn, target creature from your graveyard. Within two additional plus plus one counters on it. Whenever a legendary creature you control dies, Rakdos joins up, deals damage equal to that creature's power to target opponent. Pretty okay. And a requisition raid. We'll probably play that because that is a very, very flexible removal spell. And also buffs your dudes. Which is nice. Art card for Tiny Bones joins up. We've gotten so many Tiny Bones art cards. Maybe that means we'll see Tiny Bones. Ooh. Gila Corsair. 
Chrom Violent Cacophony. Two blue red for a 3-3 three, three with flying. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus plus one counter on Chrom Violent Cacophony and draw a card. Violent Cacophony. That is certainly a series of words. Fake your own death. Well, I don't know why we keep printing these, but it's fine. Six shot Vault Buster. Oh, this was a green card. It goes there. Pick up a shield. Oasis Gardener. Snakeskin Veil. Trick Shot. C Cactar Angela, once again. Sour Springs. Blue Black Desert Land. Ariette's Lullaby. Destroy target crap. <laughs> Destroy target crap. Treacher. You gain two life. Hindering Light. What is this? Counter target spell that targets you or a permanent you control. Draw a card for a white and a blue. Hmm. Do we play this? Well, we don't have a deck with white and blue, so probably not. But interesting. Free Strider Lookout. For two and a green, you get a three through with reach. Whenever you commit a crime, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tap. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This ability only triggers once each turn, but that ability is crazy. I don't know how consistently green can target other things, but I do know there's a lot of things that let you just incidentally target your opponent's stuff. For example, the Mothman, uh, whenever he mills cards, he can target X creatures where X is the number of non-land cards milled that way. If you mill, say, you know, three, three cards, and you only have two creatures, and one of them is the lookout, if you target one of your opponent's creatures, you can uh, you can then do that. Almost done with work, and then I play magic. Woo! We love playing magic here. I know that's an unpopular opinion with the magic playing community these days, but I think playing magic is fun and enjoyable. We have another ad card. Be gone. Lively Dirge. Unfortunately, I didn't get a. I, I did say uh, to Evelyn on Twitter that I would try to get her a uh, foil one, but I have yet to open one up. Uh, this one's kind of interesting. It lets you entomb a card or uh, pay some extra mana to get two creature cards with mana value four or less and put them onto the battlefield. Very good. Metamorphic Blast, Ankle Biter, Lone Shark, Desert Dew. Yeah, I really like the... I, I think that's the big issue with them. Like, uh, it, it's hard to read them. I think that's just the thing of, like, they've been trying to do more, like, lighter colors nowadays. And that's a bit of an issue. Cross Dazzler, Sterling Keykeeper, Explosive Derailment, Voracious Varmint. We got a Forest, another Sterling Keykeeper. Clear Shot, like... I can tell this is a green card, but like, if it's a multicolored card, it gets really hard to tell. Two and a green, target creature control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It deals damage equal to tar equal to its power to target creature you don't control. It's okay. Duelist of the Mind. Nathan Stewart, World Champion, 2023. His card. One blue for a X3 with Vigilance and Flying. Uh, whenever its power is equal to the number of cards you've drawn this turn, so at the start of its turn, like on your opponent's turn, it'll be a zero three typically. Uh, but uh, whenever you commit a crime, you may draw a card. If you do, you discard a card, and that only triggers once each turn. So if you can find a way to do it to that your to your opponent, not bad. Then shoot the sheriff, destroy target non-outlaw creature. Assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks are outlaws. Everyone else is fair game. That's a black card, not a red card. All right, we're almost two thirds of the way through the box. We have we've opened some pretty cool stuff, but nothing like eye boggling. Let's see here. We've got Deep Monk, Desperado, Sandstorm, Verge. Target tar creature can't block this turn. Activate only as a sorcery. That might be okay to just play. Rackish Crew, Plan the Heist, Jailbreak Scheme, Skullduggery, Vengeful Townfolk, 
Harriet Sullaby, Thunder Salvo, Bristling Backwoods, Red and Green, Red and Green Desert, Quilled Charger, Three and a Red for a 4 3. Saddle 2, whenever it attacks while it's saddled, it gets plus one plus, plus, one plus two and gains, menace, gains Menace until end of turn. Terminal Agony, 2 black and a red for a sorcery destroy target creature. Madness, red and a black. Means if you discard it, you can. Kaboom. V Ooh, Vaultborn Tyrant. 5 green green for a 6 6 dinosaur. When it enters the battlefield, when it or another creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you gain 3 life and then you draw a card. Then when it dies, if it's not a token, you create a token that's a copy of it, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. This card is cracked. And it's in standard. I don't know why. Malcolm the Eyes. Blue and a red for a Siren Pyro 2-2. Two -two. Flying haste, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, investigate. I wonder if we have enough blue-red cards for a deck. Maybe. We'll need to take a look. I don't know what all we have. I know we got a lot from the Ravnica sets, but I'm not sure. We got an elemental token. Oops. Shackle Slinger. Outcast Green Blade. Fake your own death. I put these in the wrong place. Peerless Rope Master. Ambush Gigapede. Phantom Interference. Reach for the sky. Holy cow! We got holy cow! <laughs> it's two and white for two two. I, 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 it's just a flash flyer that does things with ATVs, but come on. It, it, it's a holy cow! It's so fun. I, I love this set. This set's really cool. Prickly Pear, Eroded Canyon, Blue and a Red, Nurturing Pixie, and we got Fling! Ooh! One red for an instant whenever you cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. Deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. And Seraphic Steed, Green and a White for a 2 2 with first dragon lifelink whenever it attacks while saddled. Create a 3 3 White Angel creature token with flying. I don't like how the. 3-3 three, three can't then turn around and mount the steed, but like, balancing purposes, I understand. Treasure Dredger. One tap, pay one life, create a treasure token. This is very good. Very good card. Gonna organize the cards a little bit. So with this pack, we are now officially a third of the way through the box. We haven't had some bad opens, but like, I would like some of the three color legendaries personally. Like, we don't need them, but, like, I would like them. Another ad card. Go away. You go, holy cow! And they're like, yeah, right? It's a really cool spell. And you're like, no, 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 no. Hol I I'm casting holy cow in response. Red Rock Sentinel. Two tap, sacrifice land, draw a card, and create a treasure token. That's not bad. I'm putting that in a Yuma... Once I get, like, my own copy and not in this pile. Intimidation Campaign. I think this card might be very good. I don't know, but it, it might be. When a black one enters the battlefield, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life, and you draw a card. Whenever you commit a crime, you put it back into its owner's hand. Note that it's not once per turn. I guess, like, I guess you can't make it once per turn because, like, it's... Like, we don't have, like, hard once per turns like Yu-Gi-Oh does. But this card's really cool. I don't know what it'll see playing, though. I might try it in draft. Frontier Seeker. Seize the Secrets. This is a good card. Costs one less unless you, uh, if you've committed a crime this turn, then you draw two cards. Not bad. Nezumi Linebreaker. Mirage Mesa. Tumbleweed Rising. Create an XX green elemental creature token where XX is the power, greatest power among creatures you control. And it has plot for two and a green. Infant of Wingsmith. Dead Eye Duelist. Abraded Bluffs. Foil Armored Armadillo. Savage Smash. One red and green for a sorcery target creature you control gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. It fights target creature you don't control. It, it's good. It's fight spell. Ooh, Caravac the Punisher. One black back for a 3 3. 
Whenever you commit a crime, exile up to one target black card from your graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy. If you do, you lose two life. Huh. Interesting. We, we have a lot of good black cards. Maybe we should try a mono black deck? Maybe? I don't know. Uh, ta Tali Joaquin, perfect shot. Red and a white for a 2-3 human mercenary. Whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to a creature equal to that creature's toughness, draw a card. That means if you kill something with it, it dies. X-tap. If a source would you control would deal non-combat damage to a permanent or player this turn, it deals that much damage plus X instead. Ooh, that could get out of hand very quickly. Because that's not the next. It's just if a source. So, like, if you had a bunch of pingers and then you tap, this for like 12 the, everybody's dead yeah that's kind of nuts but i don't know if we can facilitate that here in our meta quote unquote okie dokie Got an art card for, uh, this is the bad guy of the set. It's a cool, the unrepentant. He really told everybody to stay mad. Marauding Sphinx. Gonna take you for a ride. To fake your own death. Area Strix. Trained Ernix. Black Snag Blizzard. Buzzard. Drover Grizzly. Mystical Tether. Highway robbery. We got a forest. A foil giant beaver. Ah, uh, thank you, Squee. Thanks for sharing. Another skewer of the critics. We already saw one of these. Orner <laughs> Ornery Tumblewag. Two and a green for a brushwag mount 2-2. Two -two. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Ooh. That's just good on its own. Whenever it attacks when saddled, double the number of plus one plus one counters on target creature. That's nuts. That's crazy. Caught in a crossfire. We already saw this one. Okay. We are now moving into the last third of the box. Barn owls are very pretty. I like all birds. Most birds are pretty. Some look like doofuses, but like that's pretty in there. They're pretty on the inside. We have a fleeting reflection. Hollow Marauder. Outlaw Stitcher. Phantom Interference. Bristle Pack Sentry. Mourner Surprise. Hard Bristle Bandit. Holy cow! It's holy cow! How many times, how much can I get out of that one joke? Discerning Peddler. Got a Plains. Tumbleweed Rising, but it's foil this time. Another Hindering Light. Fortune Loyal Steed. It's two and white for a 2 4. Enters about a Floaty Scry 2. And whenever it attacks while saddled at the end of combat, you blink it and something that saddled it. it it's fine. I don't think it's that good, but it, it's okay. It's a very good mount um, if you have something that can mount it. I don't think we want to do it in, like, a plink deck or anything. We've got two holy cows! Golem! Get your feet off the ground, I said, Golem! Go full steam ahead, said, Outcast! Okay, we're done with that joke. Silver Deputy. Gin of Fool's Fall. Gold Pan. Vault Plunderer, Spinewood Paladin, Stagecoach Security, Reckless Lackey, Eroded Canyon, Blue Red, Desert Land. Ooh, this is a rare. Stinger Back Terror, two red red for a 7-7 seven, seven with flying and trample? What? Oh, it gets minus one, minus one for each card in your hand. That's understandable. It doesn't have haste, which is weird. But it does plot for 200 red, so that's not that bad. That's a very powerful card. Ooh, we got a Mythic. Force of Vigor. 
two green green. If it's not your turn, you may exile a green card from your hand rather than pay this card's mana cost. Destroy up to two artifacts and or enchantments. If you have a green deck, we're playing this. It's just, it's just solid. Hey, look, we got a cool. The Unrepentant. Black, black, red, red for a 5-5 five, five Scorpion Dragon Rogue with Flying and Trample. You sacrifice three other creatures. You may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery and only once each turn. That's kind of insane. That, that's like a really good card. And another Servant of the Stinger. Again, I would like one of those three color legendaries. I thought there were a bunch, if I recall, but I guess I forgot. Or we were just getting unlucky. We got a bow token. Maybe we'll get Bonnie Paul. No, Bonnie Ball? No, Bonnie Paul. Got it, because Paul, Paul Bunyan. <laughs> we have another Badlands Revival. Blood Hustler. Overzealous Muscle. Spring Slasher. Conduit Pylons. Raven of Fell Omens. Giant Beaver! Bridled Bighorn. Rodeo Pyromancers. We got a mountain. A foil buried in the garden. I still don't know why this is in here. We just had this card. But you know. Ooh! Archive Trap! Like, okay. We're not gonna play this. It's not that good. It's only kind of good in Commander, and like, we're not gonna do it. But three blue, blue. If an opponent searches their library this turn, you can pay it, pay zero rather than the cost. Target opponent mills 13 cards. Very good and modern. I'm glad that they found like ways to reprint these like weird cards that you can't really print anywhere, really. I, I love this stuff. We got an, we got another Selvala. Like, come on, like. If you're gonna give me a mythic, give me a mythic that, like, isn't the same one that we have. Come on. And a rambling possum. I think we... Actually, Purification was the first card we pulled. And I think this card is pretty decent. Getting Menace... Menace and Haste, or a 2-2, or plus 2, plus 0, pretty good. I've been, I've been pronouncing a ferocification. It, it's for it's because it's ferocity. It's becoming more ferocious. Ferocification. We got an ox token. Go five. Bandit's hall. I like this card. Cunning coyote. Aloe alchemist. Razzle Dazzler, Sterling Hound. Oh yeah, that card's cracked. I I think like I think you only want really want to play one, but that card is very very good. Patient Naturalist, Sterling Key Keeper, Quilled Charger, a Lush Oasis, Green the Green Blue Desert Land. An unfortunate accident. Uh, I'm gonna be real. This doesn't look like an accident. Uh, it's it's a spree card. So, a black, you just gotta pay that. Then you can either pay two and a black to destroy target creature, or an additional one to get a mercenary token. Or you can pay a total of three and a black for both, in addition to the one that you already have to pay. We've got a journey to nowhere! Is anybody else here? I'm assuming everyone here has watched Friday Nights. If not, that's gonna be weird. If you're watching me before you have seen any of LRR stuff, that would be funny, and I have no idea why you're here, or how you're here, honestly. Journey to nowhere. It exiles a creature. Outcaster Trailblazer. Two and a green. When it enters the battlefield, you add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Get four, two. Whenever another creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. You definitely want to be plotting this card because you want the extra mana to like ramp out into something big. And a draw card. Okie dokie. We have... No, I'm not getting everything over. We've got seven packs left. Let's see what we can get. 
I would really like a three color legendary. Zombie Rogue for the zombie people that we got. We got a Brimstone Roundup. Whenever you catch your second spell each turn, you make a 1 1. I'm definitely considering, like, I wish we, I hope we open Annie. Annie's a Naya, and we can play her and Silvala and make, like, a bunch of mercenary tokens. Nimble Brigand. Vile Smashful, Vile Smasher, Gleeful Grenadier. When it enters the battlefield under your control, deals one damage to target opponent. Whenever another outlaw enters the battlefield under your control, it does one damage to target opponent. Ooh. Very good. Corrupted Conviction. Vengeful Townsfolk. Seize the Secrets. Irrescribable Wolverine. Free Strider Commando. Infant of Wingsmith. Forest. Form a posse. Ooh, crackle with power. XXX red red for a sorcery. Crackle with power deals five times X damage to each of up to X targets. So if X is one, it, this is like algebra incarnate. If X equals three, how much damage does this deal? Well, let's see. It deals X, it deals 15. To up to three different targets. And it costs three, six, nine, eleven mana. Very good. And a Stoic Sphinx. Two blue blue for a five three with flash and flying. Has hexproof as long as you haven't cast a spell this turn. So it has so you do it when, you, when people are tapped out, and then you just don't cast anything. And an emergent haunting. I thought this card was better than it is. It's at the beginning of your end step. If you haven't cast a spell from your hand this turn, and it isn't a creature. Oh, wait, hold on. It becomes a 3 3? Never mind. I thought that said until end of turn. Huh. That's not bad. Oh, don't come back. Spin down. Stay up. Open a Sazami. Open up the packs. We got a mercenary token. Three, four, five. Mage Bane Lizard. Wrangler of the Damned. Prairie Dog. Daring Thunder Thief. Wanted Griffin. Skull Duggery. Dance of the Tumbleweeds. Invent of Wingsmith. Mine Raider. Jagged Barons. Black Red Desert Land. Thunder Salvo. Another Terminal Agony. Ooh. Oh, it's the bad one. Ancient Cornucopia. Two and a green. Whenever you cast a spell that's one or more colors, you gain one life for each of the spell's colors. Do this once each turn. And it taps to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. It's a mana lift. That is bad. It gains life. If you have something that triggers off of gaining life, it's probably good. But, like, we don't have any of that, and that's not bad. Inspiring Vantage. It is a very fun card. Uh, I think we're going to play it because it's basically a ramp spell, but I also like it because it become, you can make a creature later. We got a blood token made by other stuff in the big score. Ruthless Lawbringer. Get away Glamour. Ankle Biter. Stop Cold. Take up the shield. Oasis Gardener, Throw from the Saddle, Iron Fist Pulverizer, Tumbleweed Rising, Foil Island, Foil Map the Frontier, Void, uh, we already have a Void Slime, no, it's Green, Blue, Blue, Counter Target Spell Activated Ability or Triggered Ability, but we already have one, no. Step Between Worlds, this is very interesting. Each player may shuffle their hand in graveyard into the library, each player who does draw seven cards. Then you exile it. It costs more to plot, but it lets you like kind of play out your hand and then cast it for free later. I think this card's neat. I just don't know like where we see play with it. And a mobile homestead. Yep, yep. 
does indeed count as search one. That is something very interesting that a lot of people don't know is that spells like that go in order. Oh, we got a pest token for the pests. Good. M Windows, what do you need? We have return the favor. Copy target instant spell, sorcery spell, activated ability, or triggered ability. You may choose new targets for the copy. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. This is just a bad deflecting spot. However, a bad deflecting spot is still a deflecting spot, so I think this card is playable. At knife point, unscrupulous contractor, peerless rope master, ambush gigapede, slick shot vault buster, explosive derailment, snakeskin veil, ariat's lullaby, foil swamp, foil harrier strix, essence capture meh, Calamity Galloping Inferno. 4 red red for a 4-6 with haste and saddle 1. Whenever it attacks while saddled, choose a non-legendary creature that saddled it this turn and create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of it. Sacrifice the token at the beginning of the next instep. Repeat this process once. That's not bad. That is true. It's like bad pizza. Like, it's still pizza. At the end of the day, it's fine. As long as you don't put anything gross on it, it's still pizza. And if you're complaining about pizza, who even are you? I'm running out of places to put the trash wrappers, but considering how zoomed in I am, you guys cannot see the fact that they are encroaching upon my territory. Mercenary token. Fair the Joe, Frontier Mentor. We already got one of those, so I'll put it over here. Unfortunate. Accident. Overzealous Muscle. Jailbreak Scheme. Desert Stew. Mirage Mesa. Thunder Salvo. Cact Tarantula. Sterling Supplier. Red White Abraded Bluffs. Foil Mirage Mesa. Hypothesizzle. That's not bad for the, the deck. I wish it was something fancier, but you know. Aven Interrupter. Flash Flying. Whenever it enters the battlefield, exile target spell. It becomes plotted. Spells your opponent's cast from graveyards or from exile cost two more to cast. This card is funny. And we got a Lava Spur Boots. Ooh, very good. That's like a Swiftfoot Boots. It's not as good, but it's a little bit cheaper, so it makes up for not being as good. How do you have Little Caesars a day too late? Like, I've had Little Caesars like a week after, and it was fine. Well. Okay, let me rephrase. Fine, by the standards of, like, I was really hungry and needed food. But I also didn't want to spend a lot of money. So, like, you know, I, I knew what I was getting myself into, but, like, at what cost, you know? Bovine Intervention. That's very good. We like this card. It's another removal spell. Baron Bertram Greywater. 3 4 for a 2 white and a blank. You get a 3 4 vampire noble. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battlefield under your control, create, create a 1 1 black vampire rogue creature token with lifelink. This ability only triggers once each turn. Then you can sacrifice another creature or artifact and draw a card. That's not bad. Unfortunately, nearby where I live, as in this multi dimension where I am recording this from, we don't have Little Caesars, unfortunately. Quick draw. Geyser Drake, Boneyard Desecrator, Take the Fall, Trick Shot, Voracious Varmint, Stayer Clayer, Green White, Crisote Heath, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, Yuzumi Link Breaker, Heartless Pillage, Two and a Black Target Opponent discards two cards. If you attack this turn, create a treasure token. That's fine. Claim Jumper, Two and a White for a 3 3 Rapid Mercenary, Enters Battlefield. If an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search your library for a planes card, put it on the battlefield tapped. Then if an opponent controls more lands, then you repeat this process once. That's very, very good. In a white deck, that's that's crazy. And a raucous entertainer. Alright, we have one more pack left. Aw, thank you. I wouldn't say I'm stronger than anybody. It's just more like 
I have a higher tolerance for pizza. Although, I am very bad at, like, eating, like, actual food. Wait, what? I put five back. That was a rare. Don't, don't pay attention. Aha. Trash the town. I like this effect because you can pay one in a green to give something, draw two cards, and that becomes, like, a pseudo divination. That's pretty good. Founding Felidar. L another Lazav. Lone Shark. Rooftop Assassin. Dead Eye Duelist. Reach for the Sky. Another Holy Cow. We got three of them. Renegreen Green for a Bristling Backwoods. Foil of Raska joins up. We already got one, but that's another Buried in the Garden. Woo! Territory Forge. Four and a red. Enters the battlefield. If you cast it, exile, target, artifact, or land. Has all activated abilities of the exiled card. Interesting. So you could destroy someone's land and then get their effects. Interesting. We have Satar Sataru, the Infiltrator. Blue and a black for a 2-3 with Minache. Whenever it and or one or more non-token creatures enter the battlefield under your control, if none of them were cast or no mana was spent to cast them, draw a card. That's pretty good for, like, plot stuff. And a Caustic Bronco. One in a black for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever it attacks, reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. You lose life equals to that card's mana value if it isn't settled. Otherwise, each opponent loses that much life. That's very good. That's a very good creature. Okay. Let's go to the just chatting screen so I can clean up and unzoom out. And we will get to building a deck. I'm only going to be live for about another 30 minutes or so. I, I'm getting hungry. But let's go to this room. Hello, everybody. Hear the pack cleaning up ASMR. Clean up, clean up. Everybody do your shit. Whistle while you work. Do 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 do. I cannot whistle, so I just hum the words to this song. Do 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 do. Put them in this bag that I have and hope that it all fits. Nope, it didn't fit. Uh oh, that's not good. Ah, uh, everything's falling apart. Hello, I'm back. Okay, let's get everything else cleaned up a little bit here. Turn to here. Doodle -doo 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 -doo. Oh, the pizza tolerance scale may be the next big thing, but that's but that's absolutely hilarious, but like totally accurate. What's your pizza tolerance at? Yeah, it's like how desperate do you need to be? Like I don't want to say Little Caesars is the bottom of the pile, but, like, it kind of is. Let's be honest with ourselves for a moment. However, uh, I have the classic uh, Russian Badger bit. Uh, yes, I do enjoy watching his stuff, in case you, like, don't know who that is. He's, he's like, he was, like, a seed streamer. Now he's more like a general content thing, which is honestly what I probably intend to do eventually. It's just, like, I want to go from doing magic stuff to just general content and making stuff about games and card games that I just like to play and do. But I do know niching down is good for an audience and I do love Magic the Gathering. It'll probably just end up being a second channel or something. Anyway, uh, he has this bit where it's like, we have Little Caesars. Is it good? No, uh, the bit is, we have Little Caesars. It is hot and it is ready. Is it good? It is hot, and it is ready. I couldn't zoom in any faster. Like, apparently, like, this thing does not like me being flexible. I don't know how people manage their... Ah, no! I have so many elements. I need to lock stuff in. I'm not a good streamer. I don't do this enough. <laughs> I should probably do this more. Uh, let's go to... Oh. 
uh, I'm going to organize it a bit more. I do have like everything in like different places. I have so many tokens. I, I love tokens. Maybe it's just me. It's probably not a unique thing, but like I love tokens. I love like having the cool art. And I love having like the thing to represent it. Now, I also love infinite tokens. Infinite tokens are really cool. I still need to buy some. I keep forgetting to. I'm like, ah, yes, I need to do that. Every time I stream, every time I go on someone's stream, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to buy some of these. But I never do. Don't know why. Got those tokens off to the side. Got the lands off to the side. Let's get these lands and colorless cards. And separate the big score cards from them. Uh, I think that was here. We put a lot of basics in there, apparently. Yeah, I had no system of organization for this while I was opening them. Not for the multicolored stuff. All right, let's move to here. Oh, I need to put it back. Let's go. And I need to fix the camera a little bit. Uh, yeah, it looks fine. Let's switch there. Pop. Howdy, hi. We're back. Finally off work. Have fun, Squee. Thanks for sticking around. All right, we have uh, some fancy cards here, but I think we have a few more. So let me go through here. Um, we'll organize these some way. I'll get around to it. Bop, bop. Uh, we'll put the rares. Um, bah, bah, bah. I'll put the rares off to the side for now. Yeah, let's just put all the rares off to the side and do. Yeah, let's do this. Regular rares. We have these here. This is legendary, technically. Uh, oh, and we'll put breaking news here. Breaking news rares there, and the vault ones here. Okay, there we go. We can start organizing. Pop, pop, pop. And mythics there. I don't think we opened any, but hey. Aw, thank you. Um, uh, rare. Pop. Mythic. Mythic's good. Force of Vigor. I don't know what we're going to build, honestly. Like, we kind of already have two solid decks. And I think if we build around any of the legendaries that we have now, it might make it a little bit worse. However, I don't think I would want to just play the same things throughout the year. Also, this goes there. Like, I don't think I would want to play the same... Sorry, whenever Oko is uh, in my hands, I get visibly upset. Even though we're probably going to play him, I know. He's a planeswalker. He's cool. He does things. Oh, I forgot we opened a Torper, torper Orb. Archangel of Tides. Jolene. Helen. We didn't get any three color legendaries, which is kind of surprising. Pop. 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 Badoop. 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 Badum, 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 badum. Okay. Let's see. 
I think no matter what, we want to build around one of the new legendaries because they are the new hotness. And of course, why would we not want to build with the new hotness, right? That's how that works. <sighs> what is my favorite three colors in magic? I will admit, Oko is very hot. That's like, nobody can argue with that, but like, I don't like him. As a person. My three favorite colors in magic. Ah, that's a toughie. I would have to say Teamer. Like, the weird thing is, like, I have, like, weird shifting answers depending on, like, the day, honestly. But, like, if you told me, like, like, I have, like, different answers. It's, like, if I'm, if I'm playing a mono color deck, I want to play mono black because, like, I'm a mono black mage at heart. I want to, I don't care how much life I'm at as long as you're at zero. However, if I'm two color, I think it's, uh, uh, I think it has to be, is it like Myra's, is it? And like Myra's just me, but with like less control over Myra's just me with more HR problems. Um, three color. I think it would need to be teamer green, blue, red, but uh, Bant is really good. I really like Bant. Uh, Soul Tie is really interesting a lot of times. I, I'm gonna be real. I can't pick three favorite. Like, I'm gonna bounce around all the time. Like, you could ask me tomorrow and I'll be like, Esper all day. It, it'll just depend on, like, what I, what I'm, like, into at the moment. Like, I wish I could be like, yes, I have a, it's why, like, me as, like, a character, like, if I had my own magic card, me, the character, Looney Lucy, I would have, I would be all five colors. Mostly because you gotta have at least a little bit of each color to run a magic show, like, to run a circus show. There's just so much there. You gotta have white and green to keep people together. You gotta have blue and red to be creative. And you gotta have black because you gotta be a little bit selfish because, you know... You can't be all nice and dandy running a show like that. You gotta, gotta be selfish sometimes. Don't be mean. Just sometimes you gotta be selfish. So, we have a lot of really neat legendaries to build around. Uh, so here's the question. Do we... We have a lot of blue-red stuff. We have Selvala, equal eager trailblazer. Uh, we also have the Gisa and Garoth for zombies. There's also a bunch of blue red stuff. And Fibble Thip. Fibble Thip's cool. I also like Jolene. Jolene is not an un unplayable one. Satoru is also really good. Ah, there's so many choices. Let's take a look at the box of rares. Like at the actual like stuff that we have to build with. Yeah, come. There we go. So we obviously have what we built here, but we also have. See if I can get this in view. We do have a steam vents. Don't forget about that. We have the steam vents. Uh, can I unzoom a little bit so I can show y'all more? I can't go further than that. Okay. We do have that Ravages of War. We do have the Stitch in Time, which is really interesting. Uh, expansion Explosion for blue red stuff. Uh, we have copy enchantment. I don't think we opened any, like, insane enchantments. We did get a meticulous archive, but I don't think we opened any blue-white legendaries that screamed out to me. 
Uh, in terms of green white, uh, we still have sharp eyed rookie, but I think we have that n another thing. Uh, we don't have. Why is Doppelgang not in there? We need to put that in the other thing. Uh, we don't really have that many green white non legendaries. We have some other alternative legendaries here. We do have Tristani. That would be interesting. We have Karlov with more life gain support now. Maybe we go there. And then here's all the like Fallout ones that we could build around. But like, I feel like building around the Fallout ones is kind of cheating. However, in ter we do have Rose, who's a good just card in general. Choices, choices. If we build a mono black deck, do we have enough to support that, really? Like, I'm sure we could play it, but would it be any good? Like, what do we have that targets things? Blue, black. We don't really have that much that targets things in mono black. We could honestly probably do a mono blue deck, though. Mono blue is very viable. Because we have a lot of blue cards. Not all of them are all-stars, but mono blue cards nonetheless. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at what we have right now. Just to show y'all so y'all can remember. Uh, I do have... A, we have the Wise Mothman, I believe is this one, which reminds me I had another token here. Yeah. So I have at least three for other people, rad counters. That I got from a event at my LGS. So we have the Wise Mothman. And a bunch of extra sleeves and stuff because I buy packs and I stuff them in there and I don't think about it until I'm, you know, here. We've got stuff like Birds of Paradise, My Alert Queen, Guardian Project is a good one for green. Maybe we just edit these. But I really want to play with Silvala. I think if we want to play with Silvala, we have to take apart both of these. Huh. You know what? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a poll out and I will do the top four legendaries that I want to build around and tell people to check a look at the VOD and see what we should build because we have a lot of potential cool stuff. Uh, and I would talk more about that, but uh, I am getting very hungry and the time to do the stream is almost over. I could deliberate on building this stuff all day. So I think I will leave it up to my lovely audience to see what we build. So I'm going to go to the other thing here. Boop. Boop. So hopefully this all ended up going pretty well. I don't know how the viewership was. Is 60 card format totally out of the question? Huh. We could build an Oathbreaker deck with this. Have one Commander deck and one Oathbreaker deck? Huh. That would be really interesting. I don't really have that many local places to play Oathbreaker, but I could do it online. That would be interesting. I'll need to think about that. Anyway. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, if this was like better, like let me know if like the YouTube was better or if you prefer Twitch. I don't really know which, which is better. Like if I stream on YouTube, it automatically puts up the VOD, but I could just put up the VOD on YouTube anyway. So I'm not really sure which one to do. I think separating this to magic and like regular Twitch to do like video games and stuff would be neat, but like I I'm not sure. Uh, let me know what you think about it. 
as always, thank you all so, so, so very much for watching. And until next time, au revoir.